listen to it. I could I couldn't find a copy of it on CD. Nothing. Right. I, I didn't want to open it, but I, I got to open this. Mm -hmm. Um, and when I open it, the record is chipped. Right. Oh Somehow the record had gotten chipped inside oh the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you're not gonna believe this, spot. Remember, I called you. I said, "Dude, do you have another copy of this record? Because uh, the record is, was chipped." Uh -huh. So he said, "No, I don't." I was like, "Man." Um, so I'm over at Blue Groove, Blue Groove Vinyl in Arlington, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looking through the radio section like I always do, you know. And I see in a, a, a blank 12-inch, uh, you know, cover. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, the, the Englishman, you know, roots vibration in a combination style. I said, no, no way, no way. <laughs> I pulled it out, you know, it was like near mint condition. I said, damn, I got, I got a cover. I said, this is too good to be true. I, I went to the man, I said, you know, how much, how much you guys asking for this? He's like, shit, you know, I don't know. What, what do you want to give me? I'm like, I give you, I sh I'll give you $20 for it. Uh -huh. you know? And, um, that's an impossible record to find. Yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah. And that, that, that's just strange, you know, the fact that I was able to find that record after Fox had given me this one, and, um, you know, uh, I think I may have played, you know, I may have uh, put a track on my on my website and mm -hmm. said, you know, this is a, you know, a, a DC, you know, Englishman, a big in DC reggae scene. People went crazy. Whoa. Yeah. Where's, where's Englishman? What's, where's Englishman been up to? You know, we, you know, we haven't heard from Englishman in, in, a, in a minute, you know? Yeah. And I said, uh, you know, people in the UK... You know, because we have a, we have a lot of readers over there. We have a lot of readers in Europe. You know, France, uh, Netherlands. See. We gotta get. You know, w w what's up with English man? So I said, well, let me see if I can find out. You know. True, man. And that's how it came together. You know, it was it was, it was through this record right here. It's ironic. It, it's, it was supposed to happen. It was ordained to happen. I say that because, you know, once again, one of the inspiring things of reggae music for me too was the entrepreneur spirit of being able to say I want to get into th the mainstream with you know but the, it's controlled by a certain sector of people in terms of you know we have our stable we have our artists and you know um, all right give me a one song we get them a one song and all right we give a one pound for it and after that not more no royalties, no nothing. Yeah. You know, either you go in the studio, you cut a tune, and nothing more. That's it. So when I would see all uh, like all uh, uh, Tough Gang or uh, um, um, Diplo, which is you know um, Peter Tosh, you know you see um, Solomonic, you see Augustus Pablo, you see Well Charge, you see different different labels mm -hmm. where artists took it upon themselves. To kind of like say, I'm gonna produce this music from start to finish. The only problem was, you know, once you have it finished, it was like distribution. Yeah. And um, being able to produce mass distribution. In some ways, they did accomplish that, in a sense, because, you know, man travel with him, box a record, and go from Canada to England to right through Jamaica right to america you understand so that's how these albums came about you know mm -hmm. we start with a label i remember we did our first tune called um um jello 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 yeah 45 and um even ron holloway played on it up here so too right, right in in fox studio <coughs> so you did you did your first record your first single 45 yeah, single yeah. at Lion of fox Lion, Lion now how did how did you uh so you you're here you met you met maccabee mm -hmm. uh you guys got a group together we got up with fuller group together we was one of the first reg we was the not one of the first we was the first reggae band to play at um the 9 30 club wow in washington dc the punk, it was a punk club. It right? was a punk club before yeah. Yellow Man and the whole slew. We, we broke down the kick, door, right? Kicked down the door, man, and go inside there. And that time, you, that well, I think it was on F Street. Yeah. And it was a little, little place, but man, we rocked that place. So when we say we rocked it, mm. we rocked it. What man. was the name of your. Did you have a name for the group? Roots Vibration. Okay. Roots Vibration. And that's yeah. why sometimes when you say. We said original roots vibration because guess what happened and what I noticed a trend. 
You see, when we say Englishman and Maccabi, all of a sudden, you, you have all these different Englishman and Maccabi. You see, when you say Roots Vibration, all of a sudden you have Roots Vibration. So we kept switching up the name all the time. <laughs> Shangoman, next thing you know, it's the next Shangoman. And it's like, you know, and you know who also had that same situation was Itos. The original Itos. Yeah. In a desert time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man, all right? So, I mean, and I, and I can't understand the fact that Somebody see a name and say, well, it's been dormant for a little while, you know, and they ain't, they ain't using, they won't, they won't know. <laughs> they won't know. They won't know. <laughs> and the next thing you know, a tune come out, and then guess what? No, just like how you posted that online. Mm -hmm. You say, well, that don't <laughs> sound like um, Englishman or Maccabee or Englishman. Uh, that don't sound like right. that. Is that the real? And that's how you get the little controversy that comes about where you're, you're saying to yourself, you know, people are asking you, that don't sound like that's what so. you were telling me on the phone when, mm -hmm. I, when we talked the other day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, but just coming back to what we're saying there with putting out those albums, you know, it was us trying to, as like many other bands, you know, just establish ourselves here in the U.S. as because once again, reggae hadn't really blown up per se. So you had Black Sheep now that was. So is this late Moving. 70s, early 80s? Yeah, late, mid 70s, early 80s, around that time. And mm -hmm. once again, Black Sheep was at Lion and Fox. So, you, know, you can't get Fox out of the mix, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It, it was, it was, that was the first reggae can't album. Can't get him out. It's the first reggae album you did, right? Yeah, yeah Gathering yeah. was the first reggae album, yeah. Yes, man. Yes, man. And, you know. 79. 70, 70, 70, there you go. All right. So who were the players in, in Roots Vibration? Roots Vibration, at the time, we had um, a bridge, a bridge named One Son, who used to play drum. We had um, Tenny. We had Tenny, who was, he, he used to play um, percussion. We had Maccabee play guitar. We had um, a next guitarist named Errol. Um, a next, uh, two other brothers. I had my brother was he used to play keyboard. Call him the professor, and then we had um, two other brothers, um, saxophone David, and who was the next one? I think Errol was his brother who played the guitar. Yeah, but you know, eventually, as per usual with most bands, after we did several shows, we started accumulating some funds, and we were saying the band was split on whether are not to buy equipment or put it into recording so eventually you know it got to the point and the funniest thing I remember you know somebody said let's buy the equipment and somebody said but you know if the band split what are you gonna do you're gonna take a saw and cut the instruments in half and split it up so once I started hearing that I look at Maccabee, <laughs> Maccabee look at me <laughs> And I said, all right, we know what we're going to do. Uh, we had always constantly been talking about, and we said, label, record. So they were still there fighting, fighting over instruments and those things. We just took our portion, recorded, and put out Jalov. Jalov. Okay, so the, the uh, Jalov single, was that... Distributed or what, did you take it around to reggae shops yeah. or how did that Took work? Took it around to reggae shops, all about, you know. Um, I, the funniest thing too, we didn't know all of that time too, we were touring with Ras Michael and the Sons of Migos. Can't leave out Ras Michael either. Mm -hmm. um, once again, there was a record store in D.C. called Live and Learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And once again, that was like a watering hole for all the artists to come through because right. you know boss always had all the artists on his label and thing so we would always be through there and you know Maccabee is like I said the fireman me kind of was like chill back like this and Maccabee would just come in there and say oh some bad guitars this you know <laughs> oh oh and wait wait you go up on tour see my bass here you know, and it just that aggressive spirit where where with is like he had to get in. Mm -hmm. And the man said, Oh, where did this man come from? I said, Where's my beer? I said, Man, he look like him know where my door. And 
Yeah, man, he knew what he was doing. He was like Bingy Bunny then, a roots radish. Right. He had that kind of spirit, that mm-hmm. kind of like, yeah. Right. Oh, that's my God. So, yeah, man, and whoop, tour. On tour, Europe, England, and so. That gave us the opportunity to take the music with us after we had put it out. And, you know, every stop we stopped, distribution, DJ, record stuff. Every time we got a little break in the tour. So every time, at the same time you're touring the world with, with Ross Michael, uh-huh. uh, you guys have got your little your, your own thing going on. We've got our little you, package. Is it already the, the Mighty Roots label? It's or? already on the Mighty Roots label and everything. And we have our boxes and, you know, there's one, two, two, one day, one day, sometime I'm on the sell me a record, I'm selling my record, there's a little eating money right there, so I said, Maccabee, don't eat down the money, you know, because we want to go back and go press some more, I said, no, nah, man, we'll get money off of the tour, and we'll get per day, I said, no, nah, man, save the money for that, <laughs> and you know, but that was the kind of relationship we had, where it was the way, kind of like, gal it out, and yeah, nice, to, and sometimes we'd party it out, and then sometimes we kind of recollect ourselves and say, nah, man, you know, and we, we kind of have a mission, man. Stay on the mission, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> now, now, do you remember them coming in the first time? Do you remember meeting these guys the first time? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember uh, asking the, uh, m- my friend Les Susie about, did you know Englishman? Yes. Les, <laughs> Les just raised his head up and he says, good people. Les, oh man, I'm good, glad you remember. Remember the session we had with Les? Yeah, yeah. We had yeah. The, the job called Quiet War Dog. Right. Yes, I said, you can't get Fox out of the mix, you know. <laughs> right here, somewhere. Oh, and that was, history. but right, that it, was. So, so the first first word I heard about Englishmen was good people. Yeah. Right, so. I mean, he's, uh, at this point, Fox is like, like, you know, just making his, I mean, just getting exposed to reggae, right? You had just done the Black Sheep uh, album and... Uh, no, this was five years later. Oh, it was? Yeah, it was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five yeah. years so later. So, like, what, 84, 83, 84, or something like that? Yeah, 85. I think we were starting... 80, yeah. yeah. 84, 85. I'd already done Don Carlos' record. Yeah. I'd already right. done... Uh, yeah, he'd have done it. But I, I want to tell you, I want to give you a little story about Fox. Yeah. yeah look here, man. Man, I make Fox like, Fox like him get crazy. <laughs> you know why? Fox is body engineer, man. When him say balance and, and clean sound and everything, clean. Yeah. But at the time now, I said, I want it to go like this. And make the drums a brown one. Make the, I said, what the hell? What is, what is that? I said, no, man, dub, dub, you know. But he already had his little reverb and thing set up, man. Yeah. And I bought a fox to the point where fox said, man, I don't really understand what he want. But anyway, let me try something. And he just, just push up the faders and start getting crazy on it. I mean, bang. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. Psh, psh, psh. I said, oh, <laughs> right, there's someone. Right. So fox said, ah, oh, I get it now. You ever see Fox sit down? Fox sit down and mix, you know. I've never but, seen him work now, but, but I've heard. I've heard. No, the digital business come in the chat. But when it was analog, okay. And you want to see Fox really get down in a mix, you know, and start scan, can <laughs> <laughs> I say, yeah. Then he start going down to Jamaica and say, let me just know that guy's doing this thing. So okay. When he come back and I start work on the next album, he, he said, sometime, you see, I'll, he had, was this the same couch that you had? Man. How many, how many uh, reggae, reggae legends have sat on this couch? You mean, how you many you mean, <laughs> reggae legends sleep on this couch? Yeah. <laughs> Man, there was one time I was so tired, but I wanted to hear what for. Fuck, say, relax yourself, man. Sleeping, man. But I could hear the music and mixing it, man. I mean, one thing, always took his time to balance the thing good. I remember <laughs> Israel Vibes was in and they were running some tune and, and there was like a... 
He is the man. <laughs> hey, rush it you, man. Rush your life. I have pulled down everything again. I said, now that don't sound good. Pull down everything and come back again with the jump, man, and kick jump. Doof, 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 doof. So I said, oh, still working on the kick jump. <laughs> Smear, gosh, gosh, then try to fix, get the reverb and thing and put on it again. Gosh, 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 gosh. Boy, boy, good next hour again, pan the snare again. Damn. But when him done, sound right. Listen them mix them man. Listen them dubs away fox so man. Yeah. Wicked, wicked, wicked. <coughs> but but so the, I remember the the first the first time I I heard an English man or, or saw an English man was this. You know this record. Uh, you know I'm always at, I was always at the shop looking at, mm. at, the, at the records. You know they, uh, but we were just talking about green sleeves, uh, all green sleeves releases and stuff. But I mm. saw this one, mm. and it was this guy sitting at the machine, right? You know, and like he was hard at work at this machine, sweating. You know, and I'm like, man, just it, 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 and, and then then when I when I learn more about you, it's like, okay, you 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 definitely had a vision and you had in your mind what your sound wanted, what you wanted. So how did that dynamic work out between you two? Well, uh, once again, Fox, just like we said about scientists, Ruben, is a pivotal part. He's the engineer, but he's still a musician. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so if I can convey to him exactly what I wanted and in terms of the mixing, and first of all, the balance of the sound was very key. Uh, you notice uh, sounding redundant, keep saying the balance thing. But that was very key, you know. Before you do anything, before you layer and polish and everything, make sure so the levels them level. You could hear every single instrument. And if necessary, you take out certain things and hear it. And then from there, you know, you add on the embellishments that you want to have. Vocals, the horns, place them in there and everything. So that was the key why I always would like sometimes I didn't have no fear of being fretting myself with how the music was going to sound because I know it's going to sound crystal right. and so it was just a matter of making sure we, we took the things and go click and even I remember doing some vocals and sometimes my style switches and folks would say oh, now give me that give me that 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 smooth style that you had right there mm -hmm. and I'll go back and place that back in, in the vocal so I had an ear for what I wanted to, to sound like, you know, and I was just bringing that out. And once again, working with the engineer, musician, the engineer, Jim Fox, just it helped to embellish that, you know. So the, so the first uh, full-length album you did with, with Fox, was, was that the first one you did, um, the Fighting to Survive, is that what it's called? No, Fighting to Survive was done part and part. What's fighting to survive down there? I remember doing some at a place in Silver Spring. Uh, bias or something like that stood. I can't remember where that was. That track? Track, or, yes. I think it was track. Well, the next thing we used to do, we used to track at different places. Mm -hmm. I bring up the fox to mix it. <laughs> and sometimes, so like, oh, mm -hmm. oh my God. Were they using this on that, or did, did they put this on that? But I don't know if we have this here. And I was like, come on, fuck. That's why I'm giving the name MacGyver, you know. Mm -hmm. Because I told you the story about uh, Ika Mouse. And I know I'm jumping from one thing to another, but when stuff was messed up, yeah, Fox would fix it. He'd give him the name MacGyver, man. Remember yeah. the Ika Mouse, remember the Ika Mouse tape? And you had to bake it and set it up good. Them thing, them man. So he, he would he would fix up the thing. He would he would sort it out then. Put it that way. So so with the, the, this period of time when you guys are recording here with with him, I mean this is this is like the height of the DC DC reggae boom. You know, Ross mm -hmm. Records was was already full full swing. Yeah. You had well, I guess Israel Vibration was like eighty seven maybe. You had Black Your Who. Is, yeah, this we're talking right now before Is Vibes. Is Vibes right. came along in eighty eight. Yeah. Okay. And so I was working with, with Englishman 85, yeah, 86, right. 87. Mm -hmm. 
Well, yeah, most of yeah, most of the albums have the combination style. Um, everything that pretty much that come man, out. Man and Machine. Yeah, Man and Machine and music. That came after that. Um, My African it? Sister was that here too? I think yes, part of, yes, part of that was here too because some of the tracks were done different places, but brought here. Shango mm -hmm. Charisma. Shango Charisma was done. Oh no, the Shango Charisma no. That was done here. That, that was a mix-up of different things, but majority of it was finished here, you know, in terms of we did some track in, in Jamaica and different, different places. Uh, New York, Philip Smart, Rest His Soul, you know. Rest His Soul? Yes, man. Yeah, he what? passed away. Yeah, no! Recently, recently, yeah. Yeah, man. That's a next wicked, wicked engineer. Nice man. Yes, a nice brethren. You're All kidding right. me. I've never heard that. All right. Well, I'll tell you a story now. When you come back to Fighting to Survive album, and we're talking about track, now that I remember it, Philip Smart come down from New York. Mm -hmm. Right. And they helped to, fix, helped to lay the tracks on that. And in fact, did we not mix it here? And I think mix, I don't know. I think, cause I know so I'll give Philip Smart a hard time too because... When he was setting some of the <laughs> setting some of the parameters for the uh, delay and stuff, I would be there saying, "Friend, friend." But it was like, in terms of conveying that vocal ver verbally, it was hard for me. So I was trying to tell him, "Say, I want it sound like this and red, te, te, te. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Until eventually, you know, you gotta learn the lingo and be able to convey that to them so that they know what's going on. But yeah, man, Philip, Philip was in the mix too. Philip did some work on the album, and then most of it was finished up by Jim here. And I remember Jim saying something like, um, "Man, this is the album of who's who on the album because we have Israel vibes on there, we have Itals on there, we have." Enough people, enough people, and I can't even remember the credits, man, but enough people, even... Um, that was Shango Charisma? Shango, Shango Charisma, yeah. Even, even Earl Hudson of Bad Brains played drum and Squidly Def on it, and enough people. Man. Wow, wow, yeah. yeah man, wicked album. So each of those albums, they, they, they had different players on it. You said Chino was on the... Uh, Chino was on this one, yeah. I remember we was doing the album, and... Um, scientists pass through. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, we're tight still, and scientists pass through and say, Chinna's in town. Well, what? Chinna. Chinna's a guitar out immediately, and well, let me talk about a wicked guitar player. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. Chinna. Bad, mm. right? Yeah, that's man. Bad, bad, bad. Well, you know, it was good, you know, good, good musician and good time period, you know, uh, for getting things done and between touring and working on the albums and stuff like that. Because once again, it was Russ Michael, um, Mikey Dredd. Oh, yeah. 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 Because Mikey Dredd and, and Maccabee, they are families from the same, same uh, parish. Portland mm -hmm. and went to the same school, Titchfield High School and him and the Bradshaw brothers, you know, um, he used to play with Burning Spear. Yeah. yeah. And um wicked drummer named Lenky is his cousin. He used to play with Garnet Silk and um what the name of them band them man will soon come back to me, but um all of them from the same same region. They are all family, you know. Yeah. Them, yeah, 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 you know. <coughs> but let me come come back to the sound again because mm -hmm. of everything that came out of here, you know, uh, in that period, this was a distinct sound that these Englishman albums had. Like mm -hmm. I said, it was it was digital. Mm -hmm. It had a very digital sound, but it wasn't like the other stuff you were hearing. It was very heavy. It mm -hmm. was it was a heavy digital sound. But there was no digital. Really, there was no there, there was no, none at all. Matter of fact, when digital came around, it was when I stopped working with it. Everything I did with Englishman was all analog. Analog. Yeah, man. 
We, we just, have like drum machines and stuff like that. You just yeah, we, we just we just make we we just make it sound modern. We were how, like, how you do you do that? How do you how did you do that? Because it it does sound digital. It, it, I want to tell you once again, Fox Fox is bad for it, man. I mean, once again, it, 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 it's choice of instruments that you're using because you always had when I say it's the first thing I come in and I say to Fox, I always got some new toys, man. Mm-hmm. And so he would always get, if it wasn't uh, a new machine to track with, you know, that a company was like, say, well, try out this machine here and see how it sounds. I remember you get a new machine. Well, some some of, some of the drum dr- the drum machines were just coming out. Right. Yeah. Right. right. So yeah, that, that, maybe that's what you're thinking about the drum the drum machine. Right? Ma- there was there might have been some drum machine stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe that. Yeah. But uh, we were still everything was analog, analog, analog tape. Yeah. Everything I ever did with you was always on analog, analog. tape. Analog, truly, truly. Yeah. I don't think I ever worked with you in, in a digital in hard digital. drive. Well, we got we have to start work. <laughs> <laughs> get it done. Uh, yeah. Hold on it. Let me get that caller. Oh, drum programming here. Mm-hmm. Um, Fox did some of that Fox, programming. Fox, Mission yeah. Man, Arrow Mission Man. Uh-huh. <coughs> um, 87. So, 